Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, Galois Theory. So, um, what are we studying? We're studying the, the Galois group, the Galois group, as we're saying in this continent. But probably not in Louisiana because we speak perfect French. Um, if we have a field extension, uh, which sometimes we write like this, E over F, but it just means, oh, ooh, it means the same as saying that F is contained in E and they're both fields. Uh, these two things mean the same. So the Galois group of the extension, which is always written like this or with a G, is the set of uh, automorphisms of the bigger field that leave the smaller field intact. Uh, and an automorphism is an isomorphism of the field into itself. Um, or just a symmetry of the field. For example, the Gala group of C over R is the group containing the identity and complex conjugation. This is a group of order two. Uh, when you do conjugation twice, you you get the identity. When you compose anything with the identity, you get itself. Okay. Um, why don't we do a more interesting example? <clears throat> this is a less interesting example, but I'm getting somewhere. The Gala group of Q adjoint the cubic root of two to, uh, over Q. So if you remember, um, so I'm trying to describe every object, every every element here. Uh, so, well, anything here fixes the rationals by definition. So really the question is, uh, what can happen to sigma cubic equal of two? And I did the same reasoning with I on, on Monday that uh, the minimum polynomial has to stay the same because if you think of this equation, the, the equation that cubic root of two satisfies, um, if you apply an automorphism, what you have is that the fact that it commutes with the algebraic operations means I can just, um, it's, it's the same, um, doing sigma is the same as first doing sigma, then cubing and subtracting two. And the fact that sigma of rational number is itself means that this this two and the zero are left untouched. So sigma of cubic root of two is itself a cubic root of two. Um, so let me write it down. So um, what cubic roots of two are in here. Uh, the answer is is that there's one. Um, there there are three in in the complex numbers. Namely, the, the ones you get from multiplying one of them by a cubic root of one. <clears throat> uh, but only, so uh, this number, this field is completely real because cubic root of two is real. Um, so only only a real one is in here. 
because it's contained in the real numbers. So sigma applied to the cubic root of two must be itself. And sigma of anything in the field, since it's fixing a, b, and c, and it's fixing the cubic root of two, there's just only one thing that could be happening. It's the uh, sigma is the identity. And the Galois group of this extension is, is just one. It's just a trivial group. So this was very much uh, not interesting. So what did I, what, what made this very boring? Um, what made this really boring is that I, out of the roots of the minimal polynomial, I only had one of them in there. So I could get something more interesting if, um, I guess something more interesting if I had all the roots. So, um, because then I could say sigma of cubic root of two is another cubic root of two. So um, let's let's do that. Um, so this is stuff that I've already gone through. The splitting field of x cubed minus two, you, you obtain it by attaching the cubic root of two and attaching the cubic root of one. Because then all the roots of two are obtained by multiplying, of course you multiply a cubic root of two by a cubic root of one, you get a cubic root of two. <clears throat> and if you have two of these, their quotient is, is a cubic root of one. So, so this is the splitting field. And we have, so, we, we, well, for example, we showed that over this field that now lies in the middle, what we have is, an, is that the second half of the polynomial doesn't split. But it does split if you if you add to it, <clears throat> um, if you if you allow omega to be in the field as well. So um, so let's do the same thing. Suppose that sigma is in the Galois group of. of the splitting field over Q now. So uh, just like before, sigma of the cubic root of two must be a cubic root of two. But now that gives me many more options. Uh, I mean, it gives me three options. Um, for example, well, even even if I make if I if I see for example. That sigma of the cubic root of two is itself. Um, then there's still, um, <clears throat> um, 
there's still there's still non-trivial things I could do because um, the QE code of two doesn't generate. the whole extension. So uh, omega, for example, is a complex number. So it's not generated by the cubic root of two. So um, what, what uh, could something happen to omega? Um, well, yeah. It could, for example, so omega, which is negative one plus ne root of negative three divided by two, has minimal polynomial. Uh, x squared plus x plus one equals zero. Which is an, an irreducible factor of x cubed minus one equals to zero. So, um, and this polynomial has roots omega and omega squared. Uh, because omega squared, well, omega squared is when you apply the quadratic formula, it's the other solution. So, we could have. Sigma of omega be omega squared. And now uh, I should check that this is an isomorphism. That check that there is an isomorphism of fields. Uh, doing what I'm doing, uh, what I'm claiming it should do. Uh, well, actually, this one is complex conjugation. But um, if I didn't realize that, <clears throat> uh, how to check this? Well, we're going to use the theory that we already know. Um, we have, so what we have is the identity. And here, so this is an inclusion, we have that we are attaching a root of uh, some a certain polynomial And, and this field you get by attaching, well, it's the same field, but say you get it by attaching omega squared. So this is exactly the situation, um, the situation where we have, um, where, where I know there is an isomorphism field in that gap, because that was the point of, this whole discussion about uniqueness of splitting fields. Um, here we are. So it says, if you have an isomorphism of fields, this is something we proved um, two weeks ago, isomorph isomorphism of fields, which in this case is the identity, uh, and you have an, an extension Oh wait, this is the oh yeah. So you're trying to find an isomorphism between what you get attaching one one thing and another thing. And the thing is, as long as they have the same minimal polynomial, um, 
alpha is algebraic with minimal polynomial t and beta is algebraic with minimal polynomial basically what corresponds to p then there is a unique isomorphism uh, matching these two so not only do i know that there is a sigma filling this gap i also know that it's unique So um, there exists sigma in this Galois group that fixes the cubic root of two and sends omega to its square, which is also its conjugate. So for example, what does it do to the other cubic root of two, well, um, it's the product of omega and the cubic root of two. And just applying the two formulas above, the first term is omega squared, and the second term is just uh, itself, the cubic root of two. Um, so, oh, and let's do the third cubic root of two. So this would go to omega fourth cubic root of two. But now, since omega cubed is one, this goes to the second cubic root of two. So what it does is that it, it leaves the real root unchanged and the two complex roots, it interchanges them. Uh, but the thing is, I can play this game and find more elements of the Galois group. Uh, let's do that. <clears throat> so, um, I can send, I, I can, so this is another letter tell. I can find one that doesn't leave the real root unchanged. Oh, I'm saying tell. By, by doing the same thing. So you have, you have the identity and then you attach different cubic roots of two. And here I can find tell that sends cubic root of two to omega cubic root of two because they both have the same minimum polynomial. Um, so that doesn't, doesn't finish this because it just tells me, it gives me an isomorphism between these two different fields. But now, uh, what I can do is say, um, to both of them, I'm attaching a root of, well, uh, of the minimal polynomial of omega. So, attach a root of so for example, and I, now I could choose which root goes to which root. So let's say omega goes to omega. <clears throat> for the same reason, again, the, just the fact that I'm attaching two things with the same minimal polynomial, I can, I can find this uh, automorphism. So I can, there exists, there, there even exists a, a, a unique, by the uniqueness theorem. There is a tau in the Galois group. Uh, 
where tau of one cubic root of two is another cubic root of two and omega goes to itself. So in this case, um, I wonder what happens to the, the second cubic root of omega. Well, I can, I can do the same thing. Turns out, since the cubic root of two gets multiplied by omega and omega stays put, the second root goes to the third. And just doing the same computation, you're gonna see that the third one now goes to the real root. So, um, okay. <clears throat> I have two elements, um, I guess three, because I always have the identity in the gamma group of this extension. Um, I have one that I'm calling sigma that fixes the cubic root of two and moves omega around and I have tau that moves the cubic root of two around but fixes omega. So um, now I'm, I'm really gonna take advantage of the fact that this is a group. I'm gonna start doing, looking at all these extensions and just saying, if you have two automorphisms, you can compose them to get an automorphism. So what is, um, What happens when I do sigma and then I do tau? Well, what happens is that um, the cubic root of two by sigma, it first goes to itself and tau, uh, I mean, omega goes to omega squared. But then when I apply tau to these, uh, the cubic root of two changes around and omega stays fixed. So omega squared is fixed as well. So now I have an automorphism which, um, what am I gonna say? <clears throat> it, changes, um, it changes both uh, of these numbers. So it's different from sigma and tau. I could also look at uh, tau squared, for example. So tau squared, I, I first do tau. And I already, I saw before that when I do tau to omega cubic root of two, what I get is the other cubic root of two. And omega, if it stays in place once, by the action of tau, it will stay in place twice by the same action. So tau squared uh, fixes omega, but it, it moves the cubic roots of two in a different way. Um, so that's, that's five, because of course I have the identity. And I also have tau squared and then sigma. If I look at tau squared and then sigma, well, tau, uh, no, sorry. What I'm saying is sigma then tau squared. Uh, sigma leaves the cubic root of two alone and it changes omega. And then tau leaves omega alone, it changes sigma, no, sorry, tau, tau squared leaves omega alone and it changes the cubic root of two to this cubic root of two. So that gives me six elements. And they're all different because they all do different things to these two numbers. And 
also note, note that I get one for every option of um, fixing tell and for, for what, what to do to tell, because for tell there's two options. There's omega squared or omega. And uh, for cubic root of two, there's three options. So combining those, I get six, six options and I've gotten all six options here. So um, for example, these ones, basically the ones that don't have a sigma in them, they fix omega. And once I know that I fixed omega, I have three options for where the cubic root of two goes. Of course, this one just sends it, uh, sends it to itself. And in the other three options, once I make omega go to not itself, I also have three options for where the cubic root of two is gonna go. Okay. So um, maybe I won't prove this because it's getting a bit long, uh, but <clears throat> These are all the elements. The reason, so I'm going to tell you in words the reason. You say you have any other automorphism. It's going to do something with the cubic root of two and something with omega. So it's going to agree with one of these um, because these are all the options for what you could do with those two numbers. And then if you compose, you know, with the inverse, so if you say alpha, I have some element alpha that sends the cubic root of two, it moves it around and it also moves omega around. What you could do is undo this operation. So what is gonna send omega squared to omega and omega cubic root of two to the cubic root of two. Uh, it's going to be tau composed with sigma. So maybe, well, those are, those are the same. So what I get here is an automorphism that fixes cubic root of two and sigma. And then by the uniqueness, by looking at a, at a diagram like this one, and the fact that there's a unique thing once you fix where the generator of the extension goes, just the fact that these two generate the extension, really. Um, you're going to know that this is the identity. So for example, in this situation, alpha composed with tau and sigma is the identity, which means that alpha is tau composed with sigma inverse, uh, which uh, you can see based on, based on this, that it's going to be tau composed with sigma if you compute these. So, um, so that's the Galois group of this extension. It has six elements. It's, um, and you might remember in your list of groups with six elements, um, there's only two of them up to isomorphism. And one, one is commutative and the other is not. And this is this is the non-commutative one. It's the group of permutations on three elements. It's the um, it's also the group of symmetries of a triangle. So let me go back to sigma and tau. So maybe now I'll I'll think of what it's doing to the to the cubic groups of two. So if I look at sigma, sigma uh, interchanges the cubic roots of two, the, the complex ones, and fixes the, the real one. And if I look at tau, um, tau, I can it before, it sends each one to the next. And if you wanted to do, 
for example, tau squared, you would just have to follow these arrows twice. So if you want to do sigma then tau, you follow this arrow, then this arrow. So for example, well, I'm going to write it again. So, um, You can see, I mean, you can look at this and conclude that tau composed with sigma is not the same as sigma composed with tau. Because if I do first tau then sigma, the cubic root of two goes to the omega cubic root of two, but then omega goes to omega squared. So this root goes to this root. So actually you can do a computation and notice that these two are the same. So this is non-commutative. <clears throat> there is um, one non-abelian group. And it's uh, one way to see it is the group of uh, permutations of three things. So um, if you work this out, the Galois group of the um, the Galois group of this extension is basically the same thing as the group of permutations. of the set of cubic roots of two. Um, because if you if you look at these two things, um, you might realize that flipping these two and, and then rotating them, you can get every, every way of reordering these three things you can get. And there are six ways and we have six operations. Um, and that's it, they're, they're the same thing. So, um, all right, so, and also it's the symmetry group of a triangle, um, by the way. Which you can kind of see here because, I mean, this is just all coincidences, right? But uh, here I, I drew them in a triangle and you know, this corresponds to reflection along a line in the triangle. And this corresponds to 120 degree rotation. <clears throat> and I like geometry. So I draw a triangle whenever I get a chance. So um, now, this was just an example. This is the magic. Um, what are, what are the fields between, uh, these two extensions? So the subfields of, of this bleeding field. So for example, I've already talked about one, which is where I just add one cubic root of two. Uh, it's an extension of degree three. Uh, but really I could, I could just add any cubic root of two and I would get an isomorphic field, but a different one. These two are complex numbers. And they're all, they all give you fields that are in between. Um, another thing I could do where I attach some of the stuff generating this, but not everything, is I could attach omega. But why did I write two there? Uh, 
So now this is an extension of, of the grid too. And then once I have omega, I can get the whole field by attaching, maybe I make this green, uh, by attaching any cubic root of two and having omega, having one root of two is gonna give me all of them. Um, and now I'll let you think about it, but there's nothing else here. Uh, these are, there's just four of them here. Now I'm gonna ask a different question. What are the subgroups of the Gala group? So um, I know I know definitely two subgroups. How did I write them? Sigma tau squared sigma tau sigma. The everything everything and nothing are two subgroups, but there's more, of course. For example, so if you think of if you think of permutations, or if you think of a triangle, you could think of the subgroup of stuff that fixes the cubic root of two. So that includes sigma. Um, and it includes the identity and sigma squared is, is the identity. So this is a subgroup. Also tau sigma and tau squared sigma, those are reflections. I'll let you check that, but um, there, um, when you when you do either of these twice, it, all all three of these, what they do is they fix one cubic root and they interchange the other two. So you do them twice and you get uh, the identity. And tau is is like a one twenty degree rotation. So when you do it three times, you you go back to the identity. So the powers of tau form another subgroup, and I'm sure you've seen before that these are all of them. And now uh, the the meme of Pam saying they're the same picture. These two are the same picture. I'm gonna I'm gonna go look for the look for the meme and copy it. So somehow this picture that I drew here, rented it's not a very complicated picture, so it could just be a coincidence. Um, is the exact same picture that I drew on the um, the one on the left is the one on the right, and even if you if you write here these numbers, so this is saying that all of these have two elements, and this one has three elements. Uh, they correspond to to the numbers on the on the left. It also these three groups with the reflection kind of feel the same somehow as these three groups where you attach just different groups. So these are reflections, which are kind of the same, but they're three different reflections, um, but they act the same. Here you have three different groups of cubic roots of two, which for all purposes are the same. And if you think of, of the index, it matches the degree of the extension on the other side. The only thing that doesn't match is that here I made larger fields be up and here I made larger groups be up, uh, sorry, larger groups be down. Um, so let me tell you the theorem, I'm finished there. Let me tell you what happens. <clears throat> This is the fundamental theorem of Galois theory. Let F, no, sorry, let E be the splitting field of a separable polynomial. 
So circleable means that all the roots are different, um, which is something that happens more often than not. Over a field. F. Um, then what happens? So a lot of things happen. Where do I start? Um, so the thing is the subgroups on one side correspond to the, the fields on the other. So there is a bijection between the fields K that are in between in the middle of the extension and the subgroups of the Galois group. And it's not just that there is a bijection, I can tell you how the bijection works. If you have a field K, it goes to the Galois group of E over K, which is of course in here, because if you think of what these mean, this is the group of automorphisms of E that fix F, this is a group of automorphisms of E that fix a larger thing. So there's just going to be fewer that fix a larger thing. Um, and if you have a group, um, if you have a subgroup of the Galois group, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the elements in E that are fixed. Um, by this subgroup. And that is going to be a field. And that is going to be and that is going to be a bijection. So I really like that there is a bijection, but I might like even more the fact that um, <clears throat> uh, the fact that I know how to write a very understandable formula for it. And maybe let me just call this um, E sub E H. Um, and then, well, there's so many things that we know about this bijection. <clears throat> a field contains another if and only if their corresponding Galois groups uh, contain each other in the opposite direction. So this explains that the arrows in the previous diagram uh, were going the opposite way. And I guess there's nothing much happening in between. So there's not a lot of examples there, but uh, the containments um, are going in opposite ways. Also, um, if you have any fields, In this case, um, if you have a field containing another, I can look at the degree. And the degree is exactly the index of the subgroup. Between them, which explains that these numbers I was drawing before uh, match. Um, also, um, the Galois group of the extension is normal if and only if um, K is a splitting field of something over F. Um, and in this case, the Galois group of the smaller extension um, is, the, is the quotient of the Galois groups, which now makes sense because this is normal. So somehow everything you know about group theory um, just has something to do with field theory. And 
and the thing is, if you look at this picture, this is something you could explain to a high schooler because um, this is all of this here you could get by drawing a triangle and moving things around. And this is just like deep algebraic properties of complex numbers. Um, so that is just an incredible theorem. Uh, one of the most beautiful things in all of math, truly. Really. And that's going to be it for today. Um, see you Friday.